Hey guys. Um, this is not the first time this has happened where my notes are actually over here. So I'm gonna try to wing this and then like jump over. So wish me luck on my journey. All right, so I'm Timony West. I'm from Unity Labs. Um, how many people have heard of Unity before? All right, this is a fucking awesome crowd. Okay, so earlier you were asked, have you used VR before? But I would like to know how many of you have used like fully tracked room scale VR? Hand raise. Okay, a bit less. And then how many people have tried like Oculus and Gamepad? Oh, really? Okay, it's not that many actually. Okay, and then uh, like cardboard, Gear VR. Okay, all right, cool, that's good to know. Okay, so, um, so for the past year I've been doing VR design, specifically allowing people to use um, Unity in VR. So Unity, most of you guys know it, I won't go over it too much, it looks like this. It is actually a three-dimensional 3D game engine that is quite complicated looking. And my goal is to take this interface and put it in VR and get people to use it about as fast as they can use it in 2D, which is no small goal. All right, so, um, so yeah, how we get this in VR, that's my team of labs works on, among other things, but there's no design standards or best, best practices right now, unfortunately, so that's part of what we're working on. Also, Google is working on this, Oculus is working on this, independent developers are working on this, so this is definitely a community effort, as it should be, right? This is like web standards. It's something that we all need to work on together. Um, so, I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit and just talk about what is happening right now in VR. Okay, so this is like a, an extremely educated crowd, so all of these headsets look familiar to most of you, but just, just in case. Cardboard, Gear VR, Oculus Rift, and uh, HTC Vive. And, oh, I didn't mean to do that. And that's my screen. How do I get it back? <laughs> Maybe when I come back, the notes will be up here. That would be cool. Okay, who went to Google I.O. today and somehow got back here in time? You, really, how was it? Okay, yeah, I'm a little jelly about that. I wish I had gone. Okay, so this is what's happening now. This is just the trace animation, by the way, in Keynote, I highly recommend it. Okay, so we all saw these, and then today, <laughs> Google announced Daydream. Who knows about this, who saw this happening? Okay, so Daydream is not exactly a headset, it is a spec that Google has announced, actually yesterday, I guess, with the keynote, and it supports mobile, so now it's a competitor, a direct competitor with Gear, probably a little bit better than Gear, and it also comes with its own dedicated controller, which the Gear does not. The Gear supports a variety of controllers, mainly game controllers via Bluetooth, but this is the first sort of mobile headset that comes with its own dedicated controller. I want to talk about this a little bit because this is a very important thing for VR UX. So we'll start off with this because it's here. This has a touchpad here and two controllers here. It also has two secret things which they haven't announced yet. There's a secret thing on the side and there's a secret thing on the front. I'm not kidding, this is what they said today. They're like, there are two extra things and we're not going to tell you what they do. <laughs> I think they support Tango. You guys know Tango? Okay. Tango allows you to uh, map depth. Okay, so this is not a lot of buttons. So let's talk a little bit more about buttons. This is the Vive controllers. This is this, you guys saw this earlier. And it seems like a lot of you have already used this. So when it comes to inputs in VR, this is the only one that's commercially available right now. And it has four buttons, roughly. It's got the system button up top, or the menu button up top. It's got the dedicated OS button on the bottom there. It's got a big thumb pad in the middle that's also sort of a tracked controller. It has grips and it has a trigger. And I will tell you right now that's not enough buttons. I wish it had more. So this, these are the Oculus Touch controllers. They're not available now. They're coming out next year. They have a lot more buttons. So they have X, Y, B, A. They have this trigger here. They have another sub-trigger underneath. They have the joystick, which can also be used as a button, which is nice. And it also supports a variety of poses and gestures. So you can do the thumbs up and you can do a point. And as it turns out, when you're doing VR UX, this is equivalent to another button. 
which it actually comes out or turns out to be very handy. Okay, so let's talk user interfaces now that we've talked a little bit about input for VR. How many guys? How many of you guys have played Fantastic Contraption? Just a couple. Okay, so Fantastic Contraption is a VR reimagining of a flash game from like the late 90s, and you get a variety of elements. You get like a water balloon, a stick, and you get some pins here and a wheel here, and you have to make contraptions that go like about 10 meters or so. And this is your toolbox. It's a cat named Nico that has pins that you use to pop things you don't want instead of a delete key. And it follows you around and purrs and part, farts pink clouds when you double click. This is, your, this is like UI in VR. OK, so this is an example of onboarding for Fantastic Contraption. So people don't notice stuff. This is just a tutorial. This is saying, like, this is a stick. Pick up the stick, as you can see. It seems fairly intuitive once you get it, but I want to show you something or point out something near the end. This part, you get it, connect. Great, you did a good job. That's going to say, those are the basics. Look for the puppy. Now, the controllers are glowing here. And this person is like, cool, where's the puppy? What? I don't know. I don't see the puppy. <laughs> Other side. OK, puppy, finally. But that took a while, because you've actually got sort of an equivalent of blinders on. It's not too bad. You have a pretty wide field of view. Definitely enough to feel like you're there, but enough that if something's there in the corner of your eye, you really have to look like quite a ways before you can finally see it. Okay, so this is this is Tilbrush. This is what you guys were trying to show earlier. Tilbrush is like the it is Microsoft Solitaire. This is what Tilbrush is for VR. This is a thing that everyone will be spending like 90% of their time in in VR, at least at first. So it's a drawing app. It's incredibly immersive. It's incredibly well done. They have a little bit more of, a, I think, what you think of as a familiar interface if you haven't tried VR before. So you see on your left or your, your secondary hand, you can change your environment here. There's a little bit of drawing here. You can take a photo, for example. But basically, you're drawing 3D strokes with a 2D. Um, the brushes are basically 2D, but what you end up as a 3D stroke, which ends up looking really cool. I actually just stole this straight from a Google site, so you can go and look at it. I assume most of you that have tried the Vive have tried this. It comes with. So, so that this is by far the best example of a good interface in VR right now. And it does look familiar, and it is fairly two-dimensional, but it's very interactive. Things pop out when you hover over them. So. This uh, is Modbox. How many guys have played Modbox? Modbox is not as well known. One guy. All right. All right. Yes, exactly. OK, so Modbox is an open sandbox world. You can uh, take primitives or sort of pre-rigged objects and uh, bring them to life. So I'm going to show you this a little bit. You can see that the interface here, there's a lot of pointing at things, saying, like, this is what this is. But you say, here, select a cube. You can resize the cube. So in terms of interface, this is actually fairly robust for current VR applications. You can change colors in tilt brush as well, but this allows you to do it with higher fidelity. This is interesting. This is a tilt brush radial menu. This is the actual size. This is sort of the exponential view of that. So you can take something that's you know yay big in VR, and as long as you can track it, you can make the interface in VR much larger which is good because this is really noisy. So the more freedom you have or the more, um, the more you give your users, the more uh, forgiving it is, the better. OK, so what am I working on specifically at Unity Labs? Have any of you guys heard of Unity Labs before or know anything about what we're working on? Very few people. OK, so Unity, the interface I showed you before, is used to make something like 90% of all mobile games. Most of the mobile games you have on your phone are made with Unity. And by sheer dint of being around and supporting things at the right time, we are also used to make most VR content. For example, Modbox and Tiltbrush are both made using Unity. And actually, so is Fantastic Contraption. So 
this is what we're doing to help people. We're taking this interface, which can get like pretty crazy complicated, and we're turning it into this. So this is me in virtual reality laying out a scene. So this is a smaller version of the same scene that you're already in. So you can pick up objects and just move them like so. So this is a big mountain that I'm moving in a distance. I don't know why this music is playing, whatever, it's nice. But I can also just pick up objects on the small mini map here and move them around like this. So what we found is it's actually very difficult to move objects at a large distance. For the same reason, it's hard to be precise with a laser pointer. So if we just move objects closer to you, then voila, you kind of get around the problem. But you, if you want to be precise, you can just pick up a house and move it like so. You can scale it. All the kind of stuff that you'd want to do when you're laying out a level or if you're doing sort of scene design, you can use this for animation. Anything else exciting happening? All right, okay, move a tree. Okay, one more thing happens that's worth noting. So, move this over, yada, yada. You get the idea. Yeah. That gizmo doesn't work very well, but I'm gonna get rid of that. So here I'm picking up myself, and I'm moving myself next to a light. So you can actually just move the camera to transport yourself. Locomotion in VR is actually kind of a pain in the butt sometimes, so this is one solution we've come up with. So this is putting actual Unity into VR, but we're also thinking about ways that people might want to make things in VR who aren't game developers and don't want to bother to learn C Sharp. I feel you, I don't want to learn it either. <laughs> so this is a concept video, I'm just taking out some segments of it, of a new project we're working on called Carp Launch. Carp Launch lets you take game assets and just sit down on a table and lay them out like they're toys. So we use this card metaphor here so you pick up like this house here, and it turns into a house. I'll let you guys watch this a little bit, it's pretty cool. So one thing I wanna point out here is that we're using a touch controller specifically for this particular um, application right now, and it, it supports the, the pointer that I was mentioning earlier, so you'll see this in this version. So this is using um, head motion tracking to select objects here, and then you see he's pointing at the table, and this is actually, I didn't think this would work, but it works. So if you're gonna start developing for uh, Oculus Touch just now, you can actually do this, and it really does work. I know, right? I'm so excited for this. <laughs> okay, one more video. I think you guys will get the idea. So in this case, you might want to add game behaviors to your objects. These are game objects. That's what we call them in Unity. So in this case, we want to have this zombie run, because of course zombies should run. So you choose a run behavior, <laughs> and you close it up. And now for some reason, you have zombies all around your little medieval village. And there's that guy. <laughs> All right, on to the next slide. Okay, so VR, UX, basics. These are the things that are the hardest problems you'll have to solve. First, selection, second, locomotion, and third, basic OX interactions, by which I mean cut, copy, paste, delete, etc. I'm gonna go fast, because I know you guys want another beer. I understand. Okay, so object selection. There are a couple of different ways. None of this is standardized. This is standardized on a computer and it's also standardized on the phone. But for VR, it's not standard how you select an object or how you make it clear an object is selectable in a room of objects that may or may not be selectable. So you can have the object highlight, you can have the controller highlight, the controller model itself. You can change the controller model so the hands kind of grip or pinch or something like that. The controller can disappear and become the object itself. This sounds weird, but if you've ever played Job Simulator, know, you know that it actually works really well. You can have haptic feedback. All of the major controllers support haptic feedback. And you can also have audio feedback, which I highly recommend audio and VR is a really big deal. Okay, so selecting at a distance. Uh, if I say ray casting, do you know what I mean? Okay, <laughs> thanks for saying that because I can't see you anymore. Okay. <laughs> Uh, ray casting just means it's basically a laser pointer selection. So as it turns out, this is the hardest problem that I'm working on right now. 
because selecting objects at a distance seems like it should be really intuitive. So let's talk a little bit about why it seems like intuitive with this helpful video from a movie I don't really like very much. Okay. <laughs> so this is when Yoda fights uh, Emperor Palpatine in the third Star Wars movie. Here he goes. All right. So now we see the Emperor has selected multiple objects here. And now he's group selecting here. And there they go. He goes back and goes forward, and it somehow goes forward. OK. And Yoda's OK. Now he's in single select again. He switched modes. <laughs> OK, so now he's going to throw the big one. There it goes. How did he group select that? I don't know. And now Yoda's going to stop it, and then Yoda's going to rotate using the Force OS, which understands <laughs> this particular interaction. And also speeds up acceleration to the point that, you know, Palpatine cannot get it out of the way. <laughs> Ta-da! There they go. Okay, so this seems correct. This seems like how it should work. You should be able to pick up something and move it with your mind. As it turns out, you have to tell the computer what to do. So this leads into the next big problem. It's not that it's impossible. It's just that it's really, like, hard to make this intuitive. And back in the day, Apple used to make tutorials about how to use a mouse. We don't remember this now. We just think it's, it's intuitive. But get ready. You're going to have to do this like all over again. And that's OK, because this is new, and it's interesting, and that's why you guys are all here, right? OK, so you saw earlier we're doing the chessboard. We're doing the mini map to kind of avoid this problem. So you don't have to select objects at a distance if you don't want to. So locomotion. OK. All right, I know, guys. I'll talk fast. You can stick your head in a bubble. I'm not kidding. This is actually becoming a standard. How many guys have stuck your head in a bubble to move somewhere in VR? You have. OK. So Facebook did it at F8. They, they had like an example. You have a little world. Literally, it's a globe. And you put it next to your head, and then you're in the new world. It actually works pretty well. You can shoot yourself places using locomotion. You can shoot yourself uh, also using a room scale preview, make yourself small. You can use the joystick, of course. This can make you sick. Watch out. Um, move to a place on a zip line. If any of you guys have tried Land's End, it's uh, one of the best games on gear right now. Definitely recommend. Or like I showed in uh, Editor VR, you can actually just pick yourself up and move yourself. And actually at uh, IO today, they showed examples of this where you can actually just see a miniature version of where you are and move yourself somewhere else. Well, I'm sorry if I went back here. OK, all right. And then basic commands. This is another really open question. And this is actually something that needs to be standardized pretty quickly, something that a lot of people are talking about. If you're interested in talking about it more, too, just at me on Twitter. Um, undo, cup, copy, paste, edit, delete, save. All these things have hotkeys associated with them in on the computer. And we sort of punt it on mobile or support some of them on mobile. But if we really want to spend a, quite a bit of time in VR, this is stuff that we're going to need to think about. Um, I went over the controllers earlier in part to demonstrate the fact that we do not have hotkeys in VR right now. There's just not enough buttons. There's no way to do it. There's no alt key. So we can either try to rethink the whole idea, which is possible. And if you want to go for it, like, please do. I would love to hear more original thoughts around this. Um, another option we have is hot gestures. So instead of, um, this is actually a pretty common one right now. If you want to get rid of something for delete, you throw it over your shoulder. It feels really good. That's an example of a gesture. But there's only so many gestures out there that you would want to do really routinely. And so many that you're going to like memorize and, you know, like you're not going to learn 11 gestures, right? So audio commands, this is a big one I think would actually be pretty common and popular if it um, exists. But it, we can't rethink this in every single application. This would have to exist. O Oculus would have to support this, and Valve would have to support this. So if they choose to go this direction, I'm really happy if they do. But um, I don't know. I don't know if they will. So really what we're saying here is there are no rules yet. <laughs> There's no right answers at all, which is great, because uh, after this, obviously, you guys are all going to go out and find some with the Vive or an Oculus and steal it from them and start doing VR development, right? So, And in the end, what we're all shooting for is a metaverse. So I think what we're doing here, whether or not this ends up being a bubble, is good work that we're all doing towards getting towards that like actual human-computer interaction. That is the dream, and that's what we're going for. So.
All right. That's all I got. Thanks, guys.